Welcome back everyone. We're doing more hot side piping and it's wastegate time. Welcome to another episode of the 604 Garage. I took a one and a half inch hole saw and I put a hole right where those two hot side pipes merge into the T4 flange. Yikes! Well, it's not actually meant for metal, so what can you expect? It's the Radley hole saw set. Do not try to use this on metal, guys. It's just what I had lying around. Yeah, I thought if I get one hole out of that inch and a half bit, then that's all I need it for. And where that feeds into the piping there is around about a 75 degree angle or so, um, which is, you wanna be closer to 45, but I think 75 is okay. It's a lot better than 90, and even 90 degrees will work. So we'll see what it looks like from the other side. And from the other side, you can see it's gonna exit right between my idler pulley for the serpentine belt and the turbo housing. And then what I'll do is I'll plumb it into the downpipe. Okay, I've got the wastegate bolted into where it uh, connects to the merge and I've taken this flange right here, cut that off of the old pipe and I'm thinking I'm going to come in somewhere like this and merge that into the 3 inch. So this is the uh, another piece of that 3 to 4 inch uh, exhaust down pipe that I had before. But what I think I'm going to do is maybe angle this in and I got a little bit more here and I'm going to weld it right into this 3 inch here and then I'll continue with my downpipe. So just a little bit of tacking here. All right, well, that turned out pretty good. So the next thing will be is to weld this in here, change the angle a little bit, of course. So that's gonna essentially line up pretty good. A Little bit of shaping in here and it's gonna plumb right into that exhaust downpipe right there. But I don't have any three inch, so I think I'm gonna have to go buy some three inch for that side. Well, while we're waiting for material to come in for the downpipe, we'll keep working on the driver side. And the first thing we gotta do is cut a little bit better angle on the exit there of that manifold. 
and then we'll start running tubing underneath the power steering line. And once it goes underneath the power steering line, we'll kind of run it, you know, up to our merge. All right, well, I got that a little bit more straight. Um, I've just taken a bit of a hose clamp here and strapped up that power steering pressure line. I think I'm gonna end up with something that clamps these two together because it just hangs way too low. And I'm gonna come in, if we can see that. There goes my light. I'm gonna come in somewhere like this, probably. And that'll give me enough space to uh, exit around everything. Probably like that, actually. Rag joint clearance, power string pump pulley clearance, hopefully, belt clearance. Clearance, clearance. So we'll uh, give myself a better line here. That one, not that one. I'll tack that in place. And then we'll see what we can do with the rest of the, uh, the feed into the merge. Okay, well, I took everything off the merge here and I took a turbo off the flange. And the reason I'm doing that is because I've made this guy to join the driver's side over to that merge area. A little bit ugly, but it suits the rest of the system. Um, and so what I've got to do now is find where to cut this um, back right now so I, I can straighten this out. So I guess what I'm going to show you is fish this whole guy down in here. This is gonna kind of line up or plug in with this tube right here. Of course, this tube has to be straightened out um, because I need to push this straight down, not come out at an angle and push it straight down and miss this fan motor. Otherwise I'll cook that. And then uh, as you can see on the other side here, it's gonna plumb in somewhere into that driver side. Uh, I probably have to take about a three inch piece, an extension piece and uh, hook that in there to my V-band flange, but that's not a big deal. I just wanted to get this side oriented and get that sort of flex coupler in the right spot between the sway bar and the balancer. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take this guy off and we're gonna straighten that out. All right, well, here's what I ended up with. I ended up with this fantastic looking piece. Going into that piece and some more ugly welding, but Essentially, I've got uh, the crossover almost done and you can see right here There's a bit of a mismatch and that's because what I ended up doing is I ended up moving this whole piece Further away from the fan shroud. I realized it was getting too close So I ended up clocking a little bit and that's why there's a mismatch here. I mean if I pulled this back and You know simulated where I originally wanted it you'd see it lines up better But that's no big deal because you know metal you can always add metal, right? Remember that. Yeah, you can always add metal and a flap wheel is a man's best friend. 40 grit flap wheel on this stuff is very good for shaping. So basically what I'll do is I'll cut this on a different angle and I'll put a longer piece in here. I've got a lot of material left from the original kit. That'll line up right here pretty nicely. Over here on the other side of the vehicle, well, let's get my light because we need to see. Um, my downpipe, so I'm waiting for that material as I mentioned, that's going to be a 3 inch downpipe. A 4 inch downpipe would be more ideal I guess for a turbine um, of this size or a 76 millimeter turbo. Um, but I'm not really looking for killer power on this thing, I'm looking for maybe 6 or 8 pounds, that should be plenty. Um, and a 4 inch downpipe, will have a, I'll have a hard time fitting that down that hole right there and not burning my spark plug wires, even though I did everything I could to not run it up and over system, running it down in front. So a couple things I could try for the spark plug wires is getting a shorter pair. Now I grabbed one of them last night off of my Chevy Avalanche because they are a lot shorter and it is a truck motor, but those didn't exactly fit, but they did tuck up nice and close to the block. They're kind of like that. So I could even shorten these maybe and recrimp an end on here. I don't know, or I can buy these ends or I can buy this end here, maybe cut it off and put a 45 or something on there. As you can see, 
with this one right here I'm kind of doing the 45 trick and maybe thinking how it would look it's like I'm about I don't know two inches too long but if I had the plug wires nice and tight like this and not way out like this then of course my downpipe would have a lot uh, more room and these wires would have a lot happier life there so again I'll wrap everything but until I get everything sized up in there um, I think uh, the wires are going to need some help regardless. But anyhow, the dinner bell's calling and I'm getting tired. So that's it for this video. We'll finish up the rest of the hot side. We'll get the downpipe in there and we'll start looking at how to connect that to the exhaust. Do I just run that three inch behind the front tire there? Or do I try to tie it into my two and a half inch system? I don't know what I'm going to end up doing. Um, that's going to be a lot more goofing around and might be entertaining to watch. I'll be doing a lot of it underneath the car on my back. So I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Appreciate you tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, do all that stuff. You know how to do it. You've seen it before many, many times. And remember, the best time of year to enjoy your project car is all year round, even on a Sunday when you're still trying to teach yourself how to weld. Take care and keep the shiny side up. We'll see you the next one.